Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Introduction 2 series tutorials. Today it's all about this very familiar interchange by now, hopefully, the Cloverleaf interchange and some of the basics of it, a little bit of history, not much, and some of the problems and some ways in which you can fix it or make it a little more efficient and mitigate some of those issues. So first a little bit of history. The Cloverleaf interchange was first designed and implemented before the interstate highway system in the US and so it's very old and it's a very old design and so it has a lot of problems associated with it that have since been mostly figured out. It was first designed to replace very busy signal controlled traffic intersections or lights, lighted intersections and to make them slightly more efficient. So understanding this, the design begins to make a little more sense with the problems that it's, it has and how it works. One of the big advantages of the cloverleaf interchange, as opposed to say a lighted intersection, is that it does allow free-flowing traffic for the most part to get through, you know, to their new turn direction. As you can see, people who are traveling to the left of the screen can turn fairly easily so that they are pointing towards the bottom of the screen. One of the other big advantages of this intersection is that, as you can see, with the way the exits and entrances are lined up, you can actually exit and go in a full circle so that you are pointing in whatever direction you want while never leaving the intersection or the interchange. Not a lot of interchanges have this ability, and it does make the cloverleaf somewhat unique. This also is what causes the biggest problem with the cloverleaf interchange, and it is what's known as weaving, and you can see it happening right here in this area, where you have cars that are trying to exit this way, being interfered with from vehicles that are trying to enter the freeway this way and merge onto it. This becomes more of a problem if you have lots of traffic that has to turn one direction or another, particularly towards the left where they're using the cloverleaf part. However, you can even see it in here, and what it causes is traffic to slow down to meet that merging need, which can cause backups all the way up and all the way down the intersection. So how do you minimize the impact this has on the flow of traffic going through this intersection? Well, the biggest thing that you can do, and what we're going to walk through today, is a new design on the cloverleaf, a new iteration on the cloverleaf, which will end up looking something like this. Some aspects of this design may look very familiar, while maybe some others will not look very familiar. There are two main differences between this version and the version that is default in the game. The first is these lead roads, also known as collector and distributor roads on each side of the freeway here. The other difference is that I have blown up the leaf portion of the cloverleaf so that it matches up with the outside of the cloverleaf just to give it more of a smooth des looking design. Uh, this is completely optional and it is something I have chosen to do. It does require a few mods like move it and possibly road anarchy. Finally, the last thing this incorporates compared to the default cloverleaf is a little bit of lane mathematics and some, you know, node controlling and lane connecting to make it look a lot more smooth and to make traffic know exactly what they need to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out two two-lane highways in each direction. So you'll have two pointing up, two pointing down, two left, and two right like this. You can connect these here. Um, it doesn't matter, but we are going to be deleting them just like this. And the reason is... Oh, that's not connected for some reason. The reason is we are going to be creating a bridge right here. Just like that. And they're all going to be exactly the same. Once you have your bridges, it should look like this. You can see how it's going to match up here. If you want to create a bit more distance for aesthetic reasons, you can always increase the distance between the middle lanes here, splitting directions. However, I would suggest keeping the collector slash distributor roads four units apart until they meet up down here. The next thing we'll be doing is connecting all of the right turn lanes to create a diamond shape 
on the outside. We do want these to be a bit closer to the bridge on each side just so that this interchange doesn't have to be as large as it is here. However, if you don't mind it being large, you can always stretch it out further. For this next part, we're going to take this two-directional, two-lane national road piece, or whatever your favorite bi-directional two-lane road is, and we're going to go out to this second node out here. That'll make it 30 units away from this road going to the top of the screen here. When you have your road, you're going to take it out here and you're going to go up this road until you hit a 45 degree angle. And you know you've hit a 45 degree angle when the roadway is no longer curved between one node and the other. So you'll notice right about there, the road becomes straight. You get the guidelines going out perpendicular to it. And that's how you know you've got the right distance on each roadway. And you can validate that by going down this way and you can see it's 30 units so it's a 30 unit by 30 unit turn. This is our right turn lane for this road. We're now going to repeat that for all the other roadways. When you do this sometimes these nodes are not the same distance away from this road as these nodes are from this road. So what I would suggest is lining up whatever road you have with the other roads that you've already done to make sure that they're all the same distance apart like I've done here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the first segment off of each road and convert it into a one-way road this way. And same thing over here and here and here and here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our left turn going from this roadway onto that national road. I like to go a couple units down from this node just so that I can create a bit more of a turn this way. And we are going to do that for all of the other roads. The last thing you should do, and you should do it while you're making these roads, but make sure this node lines up with this node. It just makes it look more clean and manageable. So you should end up with something that looks somewhat similar to this at this point. Once you have this, you're actually almost there. We just need to use a little bit of lane mathematics to clean up these roads and make them one lane so that you have two lanes, one goes off, one goes this way, and then they come together and become two lanes again. Same thing there, 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 and there. And then I like to take off one segment off of each of the collector slash distributor roads so that I can merge them into or unmerge them from the main highway and then have them combine into a four lane road. <gasps> to do that, it can be as simple or as complicated as you want. You can use a straight road piece and have it curve that way. Or you can use a curved road piece and try to make the angle a little bit more smooth. But honestly, it's going to end up nearly the same anyway. When you've done that, you should have something that looks somewhat like this. You're going to end up with four lane highways on the end of each of these. Those can merge down to three lane highways because you don't have enough traffic to justify the four lanes usually. The last thing you're going to do is take Move It Mod to make these left turns look a little more clean. And I like to do that by just grabbing the center of it and <laughs> almost matching it up with the edge of the grass there. However, you can put it wherever you think looks the best as long as you create a nice, gentle, and, you know, decently smooth curve. This is really tight for cars, so they will slow down in here, but that is why you have the collector and distributor road. To mitigate that problem, you can move this turning lane in so that you have a smaller loop overall, but a wider turn in each area. However, I just like the way this one looks, even if it's a little less efficient than it could be. The next part of this detailing process, if you have node controller, you can take your node controller, and I like using this button right here to make the end straight. It doesn't always work, especially on these curves. However, it does generally do a pretty good job, and you can do it on all of these. And you'll end up with something that looks mostly the same, but just a little bit more smooth. And I even did it on these little nodes here where they merge and unmerge just to make it a little more smooth. Use our lane marking tool to make sure whatever lane markings we want is incorporated. And in this case, I've gone with a chevron. 
And then we'll do that with all the others, and you should see something that looks like this. It looks a lot more clean and smooth and purposeful. And then the last thing we need to do is make sure all of our lanes are matched up the right way. As you can see, I still have this one pointing the wrong direction here. And we want to use our lane connector tools just to make sure everything is merging and unmerging fine. These ones should not have a problem, however occasionally they do. So I like to use the lane connectors, and particularly where they're merging here and over here where you have four lanes, I like to keep them separated just for a small amount of time, as well as in here, just so that they're not trying to merge while they're uh, also trying to merge with these people up here. I personally also like to lock down these nodes here right before this right or left turn decision. Uh, it just helps to make sure that there's no lane switching all the way in here that can potentially block up traffic that's trying to continue on through. And there you have it, your very own modified cloverleaf with collector and distributor roads. Now let's see how it does in a real test in City Skylines. Here's that same cloverleaf located inside my Twitch town called No Roundies. And as you can see, there is still weaving on this road here where people are trying to merge and unmerge. However, what it is also doing is it's keeping it off of the main road here so that they're able to travel freely without any traffic being caused by the people who are merging and unmerging from this main road. Right now, there's not too much traffic on this cloverleaf, but I have seen it handle quite a bit, and it does a fantastic job of keeping all the weaving inside of the collector and distributor roads, which is what it's designed to do. I'd like to give a special shout out to a commenter on one of my previous videos, David Rodini, who gave me the idea for this modified interchange. I'm not sure I did exactly what they were looking for, but I had a lot of fun building this, and I do think it came out looking really smooth. So thank you for the idea, and if you have any more, please comment down below what other interchanges or new designs that you'd like to see, and I will try to incorporate them and do a build tutorial on this channel and see how well they work. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to cloverleafs and the build tutorial on how to build this modified cloverleaf. Hey everybody! I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, Alfredo here says you should subscribe. Or maybe check out this video that YouTube recommends. Well, go on. Why don't you do it?